A presidential inauguration banquet was hosted by President Goodluck Jonathan at the banquet hall of the presidential villa Abuja on the eve of the inauguration. The event was attended by some heads of state from parts of Africa, like those of Benin Republic and Cote d'Ivoire, and also had in attendance high-ranking dignitaries from the diplomatic community. Nigeria's former heads of state and leaders from the six geopolitical zones of the country, the corporate world, the business community, religious leaders of both the Christian and Islamic faith, as well as members of the National Assembly, service chiefs, and members of the Federal Executive Council, among others. The top hierarchy of the PDP was at the banquet in full force. Good music was supplied by the Metropolitan Choir, based in Abuja. and another Abuja-based orchestra. The
The toast to the Federal Republic of Nigeria was proposed by General Yakubu Gowon. I would like your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to charge your glasses, make sure that I mean, it is not empty with the best drink that you think you can have, so that we can toast Nigeria, and in toasting Nigeria, we are toasting uh, his Excellency, Mr. President, and to congratulate him for his success. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to be upstanding. Let and um, raise your glasses and drink to the toast of Nigeria to good luck, Ebele Jonathan, to Nigeria. In his remarks at the occasion, President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan again thanked Nigerians for the mandate given him to continue with the job of transforming Nigeria with the assistance of Vice President Namadi Sambo. I thank all Nigerians for your support and confidence throughout the last four years. Despite the fierce nature of many political contests, our political class is now more accommodative. Despite challenges from extremists and fringe elements, our society is now more wealthy than ever before. We all know that it takes a team to build a dream. Our great achievements were made possible by the collective efforts of all Nigerians. We are grateful to our party, the People's Democratic Party, for its unique and robust pan-Nigerian architectural membership and leadership to build on the solid foundation of reform and vision that was laid down by our past leaders. The nation eloquently answered the perennial question of how and by whom they wish to be governed by giving us their overwhelming mandate in the just and presidential election. The election are judged by local and international observers as free and fair. Let me restate for the benefit of all, that election was not a contest between North and South, or Christianity and Islam. It was a referendum on this government and the vote on the competing vision of the future of Nigeria. He again assured all Nigerians of the resolve of the new administration not to let the country down. We promise a pride of place for people of ideas and knowledge, the academia, that grows our nation's intellectual capital. We will challenge and support them to enrich our nation with learning and culture, the wonders of science and with technology and innovation, and to support our youth to find their strength to help them stand and to enable them to move the world. We thank God who has led us through four years of an incredible journey. Tonight, we cross the bridge that span the past and the unknown tomorrow. We do not know what that tomorrow holds, but with hard work and an abiding faith in our common enterprise, we shall achieve our noble objective and our laudable aspirations. A new dawn becomes, and together we can make a glorious. Let the world begin. Let us transform Nigeria. I thank you for listening. God bless you all, and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The special presidential inauguration service, which took place at the Christian Worship Center in the central business district of Abuja, was attended by the president, his wife, mother, Senate president, 
and members of the National Assembly and Federal Executive Councils, former heads of state, General Yakubu Gowan, former President Olusegun Obasanjo, and other dignitaries from the diplomatic corps and friends of Nigeria across the globe. Also in attendance were service chiefs. The special service started with the rendition of hymns by the choir and the congregation. Choirs from different denominations and states of the country performed soul-lifting songs that kept the service and the worshippers in an upbeat mood. President Jonathan read one of the lessons from the Bible at the service before the sermon was preached. It is interesting to note that the service was attended by those that can be described as the ammo bearers in the top hierarchy of the different Christian denominations in the country. The Anglicans, the Catholics, Baptists, Protestants and those of the apostolic faith all converging in one place to raise their supplication to the Lord to take control of the affairs of the country as we enter into yet another phase of our democratic journey, which has altogether spanned a total of 12 years now. Notable men of God that attended the service included Pastor Enoch Adeboe, who is the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG, Reverend David Oyedeko, Archbishop David Onayiko, and President of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Pastor Ayo Orisha Jaffo, who preached the sermon at the service. While delivering the word, Pastor Ayo Orisha Jaffo thanked God for seeing Nigeria through a most difficult but successful election, which gave a new four-year mandate to President Jonathan and Vice President Namadi Sambo. He congratulated President Jonathan and reminded him not to forget to deliver on his pre-election promise to all Nigerians as the people look forward to a four-year period of transformation that will better their living conditions in all ramifications. Pastor Ayo Orisha Jaffo advised President Jonathan to extend the olive branch to all those who contested with him so that the artist's and significant work to build a new Nigeria will begin in earnest. And for those politicians who seek power at all cost, resorting to do-or-die devilish tactics to achieve their aim, Pastor Ayo Orisha Jaffa want them to turn a new leaf and embrace godly ways henceforth. Finally, Pastor Orisha Jaffa enjoined Nigerians to support the Good Luck Sambo administration. He described the president as a man of destiny. We thank God for you. In fact, 
We don't see it as your victory, we see it as the victory of every Nigerian. God gave Nigeria victory. We celebrate you and we celebrate this great victory for this great nation. Now that you have won, we want to join many other well-meaning Nigerians to encourage you and we know that that's the way you are to reach out to those who lost so that they can join hands with you to build a new Nigeria. We know that is your character. And we are using this medium to appeal to all those who lost to join hands with the winner to make Nigeria great. But I'm not talking about what some of our politicians do, not all, but some who bury life animals, perform all kinds of rituals, do all kinds of sacrifices just to get an elected position. I mean, that's wrong. I can tell you that if you are involved in that, wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice, your days are number. Your days are number. This nation is given to God. It's in the hand of Almighty God. You will not take us back to what never profited us. If you have a nation where there is abundance in human, natural, and mineral resources, that's not the question the world is asking. The world is not saying, is Nigeria great? The world is saying, when will Nigeria take her place of greatness in the Committee of Nations? That is what the world is asking. That is why we believe that the successful elections that has been adjudged to be free, fair, and credible in this year of Jubilee is a great moment for a new beginning. More soul lifting songs were performed by more choirs at the service. Speaking at the service, President Goodluck Jonathan again reiterated his resolve to provide good governance to Nigerians of all shades of the opinion because that's the main obligation he owes Nigerians at this critical period in our nation's political history. The President said that's the least he owes Nigerians to atone for the loss of lives and properties in the past election crisis which followed his overwhelming victory in the April presidential polls. The president appealed to all religious leaders to continue to pray for the country, especially for leaders to lead the country with the fear of God. The president said that he was convinced that his election and the successful aftermath was made possible by the unrelenting prayers of Nigerians, recalling he had in September last year sought the intervention of God in the April elections through prayers at the same venue. President Jonathan again reaffirmed his faith in the country's democracy, saying that the result of the election has helped to solidify our democracy and raise the country's credibility rating before the whole world.
address the loss of life and its destruction of properties. We pray that God console the individuals and the great families. Me and the government as we meet with all Nigerians, good governments, deals on the day of God. Before the special church service ended, different men of God took turns to pray for the president and the country. So we pray that all decisions, all deliberations, all policies that come forth from the National Assembly will be such that are progressive, such that are healthy. But we pray that throughout all this time there shall be no distraction. But around the executive peace through a common good we thank you, our Lord. You have endowed us with all that we need to build the great nation which you want us to be. A nation where all will live in peace and harmony. Unfortunately, we have not been faithful to you at all times. We have often fallen short of running our affairs according to you with justice, with equity, with love and the service ended as more songs were performed. Square, Abuja, is the acclaimed Papa's Beat venue, which had in the past played host to many big-time events like presidential inaugurations, political rallies and campaigns. It was the appointed venue for the inauguration of Goodluck Ebele Jonathan and Vice President Namadi Sambo for a fresh four-year term in office. Long before the inauguration activities proper began, 
Nigerians from different parts of the country, young and old in one accord, turned out in their very best attires for the inauguration ceremony. Friends of Nigeria from different parts of the world also registered their presence to rejoice with Nigeria on that auspicious accession of a new dawn, new beginning and a new day for metaphorically Nigeria. The members of the Nigerian Armed Forces made up of the Nigerian Army, Air Force and the Nigeria Police looked very fit and proper in their ceremonial dresses as they geared up for the special parade which is usually the main focus of such inauguration ceremony. The arrival of President Jonathan, which was heralded by mounted horses to the great applause of the audience, as he made way to the podium, signaled the commencement of inauguration proceedings. After the initial ceremonies, President Jonathan quickly hopped on the military Land Rover, which took him round the arena to inspect the Guard of Honor mounted by combined members of the armed forces. The symbolic significance of this act was that it marked his last assignment in the outgoing administration as he got ready to be sworn in for his new mandate. As he drove round the length and breadth of the Eagle Square, President Jonathan received cheers and great applause from every corner of the arena, from Nigerians who demonstrated their love and solidarity for a man who is described in many ways by different people. Excitement was indeed very high. At the end of President Goodluck Jonathan's inspection of the parade, the guests were treated to a well-coordinated parade by members of the armed forces on parade. School children from different primary and secondary schools in the FCT, numbering about 1,000 who had been rehearsing vigorously in the last one month, had a rare opportunity to display all they had learned before that distinguished audience that had in attendance over 15 heads of states and governments and other world leaders. The children never disappointed at all as they took the audience through many formations in a very engaging calisthenic display that depicted a series of word formation like Nigeria, good nation, good people, and so on. They simply were a great delight to watch.
That paved the way for the swearing-in proceedings, which began with that of the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which was performed by the Chief Justice of the Federation, Justice Aloysius Kassina Alu. The Vice President took the oath of office and allegiance, after which he delivered his inaugural address. This was followed by the swearing-in of President Goodluck Jonathan, which the whole arena, and indeed Nigerians, had looked forward with a lot of expectations to. The applause that greeted the announcement of that aspect of the program, which began from when the President left the state box, continued until he mounted the podium for the exercise. The swearing-in of the President was performed by the Chief Justice of the Federation, Justice Aloysius Kassina Alu. He swore to the oath and allegiance before his inaugural address. In his address, President Goodluck Jonathan thanked Nigerians for their overwhelming support and votes in the April presidential election, which enabled him to end a fresh four-year mandate. The president traced the history of the April elections from the point at which over 93 million Nigerians defied all the odds to register and the great sacrifice made by everyone during the election that resulted in his victory. President Jonathan again paid tribute to the soul of those who died in the post-election violence and indeed the late President Umaru Musa Yaradua, promising that it is only good governance which he promised to deliver that can atone for all the precious lives lost. The President also thanked members of the PDP and indeed all political parties that voted massively for him during the last elections. President Jonathan said that with the new mandate, the next four years will witness transformation in the different areas to make life more meaningful for all Nigerians, no matter their class or status. The president said that at the end of the four years Jonathan Sambo tenure, Nigerians would have changed from a country of lamentation to one of transformation in every segment so that we can take our rightful place in the Committee of Nations. Today, our unity is firm. And our purpose is strong. Our determination is unshakable. Together, we will unite our nation and improve the living standard of all our peoples, whether in the north or in the south, in the east or in the west. Our determination and our has begun. The day of transformation begins today. We will not allow anyone exploit differences in trade or tongue set us one against another. Let me at this point congratulate the elected governors, senators, House of Representatives, and leaders of the State House of Assembly for their victories and reports. I'm mindful that it presents a shared aspiration of all our people to force the United Nations to the land of justice, opportunity, and plenty. Confident that the people that are truly committed to a noble ideal cannot be denied the realization of their vision. I assure you that this dream of Nigeria, that is so deeply felt by leaders, will indeed come to reality. It is a goal have been a mere daydream to think that is taken from the minority ethnic group with galvanized national support on an unprecedented scale to disguise present prejudices. Yeah. 
After the inaugural address, President Goodluck Jonathan on the took a lap of honor round the Eagle Square, where he also had a review of the parade mounted by men of the armed forces as he acknowledged cheers and greetings from the people. That was the first official assignment as the newly sworn in 14th head of state and commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. As President Goodluck Jonathan begins a new four year tenure, as number one citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, he carries the hope of all Nigerians who freely gave him their mandate. That was the first official assignment as the newly sworn in 14th head of state and commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The 2011 election, which has been acclaimed internationally as the best in our nation's history, has raised our credibility rating a lot higher now. We can now stand shoulder to shoulder with all the democracies of the world. Now all eyes are on Nigeria, under the able leadership of the man of destiny, an agent of transformation, to take Nigeria where she should rightly be as the largest black nation on earth. Another sector that worked assiduously for the election of President Goodluck Jonathan is the Corporate Nigeria Forum made up of captains of industry and opinion leaders in the various spheres of Nigerian life. To appreciate the immense contributions of this group, which for the first time openly aligned itself with the presidential candidate of a particular party, President Jonathan and his wife Patience hosted a thank you dinner for them at the State House Marina, Lagos. The event was attended by a rich array of the distinguished men and women at the helm of the corporate world. In their goodwill messages, they formally congratulated the president for his well-deserved victory and promised to support him in any way possible. Those who spoke included accomplished banker Mr. Atedo Peterside, chairman of MTN Mr. Pascal Dozier, and Mrs. Stella Okoli, MD Emzo Pharmaceuticals. Dr. Bukhari Saraki, the outgoing chairman of the Governor's Forum, as well as Ambassador Hassan Adamu. From the diplomatic community came an affirmation of support for the new Jonathan administration from Her Majesty the Queen of England, whose sentiments were eloquently expressed by the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ambassador Andrew Lloyd. And indeed, I couldn't stand up here today ahead of your inauguration without referring to the success of the election. You said you would provide a credible, free, and fair election. And that's what you did. And that's what the international community has recognized. Now, as Her Majesty's representative, I must be above politics. So I'm not going to talk about the PDP or any other party. Uh, that's not my role. But what I am going to say is that your election is a tremendous victory. Not just for the people of Nigeria, which it is. Not just for West Africa, which it is. But also for Africa as a whole. Where companies all across Nigeria all resolved to support a presidential candidate and a party. In the past, Mr. President, you know, CEOs or the chairman or MDs, the normal practice is that dinners, they either don't turn up, or they do turn up, they sit at the back. Then at night, they go and see the candidates. Monday, one party, Tuesday, another party, Wednesday, another party. If they send the MD to one party, they'll send the ED to another party. But for the first time, the only behind yourself. And I think I congratulate you for that. I congratulate the corporate Nigeria. We as governors of the states as well believe we owe it to the private sector to work closely with them to make this country. We believe that you are the only one that can express the willingness to transform Nigeria on the basis of experience, on the basis of honesty, on the basis of uh, transparency and goodwill. 
Mr. President, I told them that it, that is possible for a sitting president to conduct a free and fair election. A lot of people were doubting that Mr. President we have proved Nigeria right. Not only that we have conducted a free and fair election, but we have conducted one of the best elections in modern Africa. The toast of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the good health of President Goodluck Jonathan were proposed by Mr. Odia Ajumagobia, Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chief Rashid Badamosi. In corporate Nigeria, the men and women in this room are the people that are going to transform the country as you promised, Mr. President. And so let me ask you all to rise and drink. I like the way she put it down on me. I like the way she put it down on me. I like the way she put it down on me. She looks like she's a supermodel, cover up a fashion magazine. She looks like a queen and she knows. She reminds me of Maxi Paris. She knows she's the finest girl I see. She looks like a queen and she knows. In his remarks, President Goodluck Jonathan thanked all members of corporate Nigeria for their huge support towards the realization of his presidency. He promised to work with the group and other Nigerians to consolidate on the gains already recorded by the outgoing administration. The president advocated new ideas to move the country forward. And the one thing I promise is that I have the political will to do what is right for this country. I mentioned that the elections will try as much as we can within human error to make it free and fair. And quite a number of my political friends are quite apprehensive. I remember a number of friends in the are saying that Mr. President doesn't know what it means I want my one vote. I said that it would be honorable for me to be voted out. And let it be on record that an African city president was voted out. because of the massive support I got from you and the rest of the country. I was not voted out, but I was voted in. <laughs> so I have no reservation at all. I have no apologies at all. I will not hesitate in any way to do what is right for this country. And for us to do that, definitely we will work with the business community, people here, and some of our colleagues that are not here. Government must protect our business. Another program, which was part of the presidential inauguration activities, was a lecture delivered by Professor Oladakbo Adamoleku, a distinguished and internationally acclaimed Nigerian scholar in the politics of development. Professor Oladakpo Adamoleku, an erudite scholar, management specialist, and renowned public administrator with the World Bank for many years, was conferred with the National Order of Merit Award in 2005. That's the highest award for academic and intellectual attainment in the world. In his well-researched lecture, which was all-encompassing, Professor Adamoleku congratulated President Goodluck Jonathan for his victory at the polls, by which he said, the president has succeeded in breaking the jinx of the spate of fraudulent elections in Nigeria. Moving forward, however, Professor Adam Oleku advised President Goodluck Jonathan that since he has earned the confidence of Nigerians and the respect of the international community through the internationally acclaimed electoral legitimacy, he has to quickly set in motion processes to effect quick, medium and long-term changes in some areas which he identified as electoral legitimacy, the rule of law, security, and the war against corruption. Professor Oladakpo Adamoleku, who is a world-acclaimed expert in development issues, said President Goodluck Jonathan should quickly move to give more bite to the anti-corruption crusade. He advised President Jonathan to show example of transparent leadership by the declaration of assets of himself, his wife, as well as ordering ministers and government functionaries to do the same. That way, he said, 
the credibility rating of the government will rise. Professor Damaleku was of the opinion that poor infrastructure and the epileptic nature of power also need urgent attention. He added that a more pragmatic approach should be introduced to check once and for all all the religious and ethnic induced violence which have continued unabated in parts of the country. With good governance and service delivery, which all these adjustments will bring about in the polity, Professor Adama Lekun concluded that he has no doubt at all in his mind that President Goodluck Jonathan would have indeed become a transformational leader at the end of his four-year tenure. I will expect the criteria for determining the President's card in 2015 to include elements related to the five fundamentals and three transformation results areas identified and discussed in this lecture. Of the five fundamentals highlighted, assessment of the President's performance is likely to focus mostly on three, electoral legitimacy, peace and security, and anti-corruption. The 10 governorship elections that will be due before the 2015 election cycle will provide evidence on whether or not a free and fair and credible election has become the norm in the country. Jenu Yakubu Gowan, who was the chairman of the presidential inaugural lecture, also echoed the need for better power supply, infrastructure, and a most drastic act to put a final stop to corruption as some of the burning issues which the Jonathan administration should tackle quickly once it settles down to business. Nigerians and indeed Nigeria will rebel in self prep once we are able to check the canker worm of corruption. We join the global family by embracing the Millennium Development Goals and DGs and in the process set a target of 2015 for ourselves. Talking about the elections, President Goodluck Jonathan said that the fact that post-election litigations have dropped by 80% is a positive indication that a lot has been achieved in Nigeria's democratic process. President Jonathan advocated for longer tenure for ministers in order to sustain development. He also spoke on other burning national issues at the lecture. For us to get to where we want to go, it's well. The quality of leadership, which of course how do the leaders emerge through the electoral process, through the appointing uh, processes. For the time these people stay to execute their work also matters. Because during the uh, the prof made mention of policies, constraints of policy or stability in a way. If a, a, a government come up with a good policy and God, that government grows the following day, another person comes, there's the tendency for them to change. One thing worries me, and one thing, just not worry me, but one thing I believe that helps us not to transform as fast as the way we want to, is the duration of ministers serving. I will not talk about uh, the presidents or the governors, the constitution have said four years, oh, quite a number of people, four years is too short to make any changes, which I also believe, because if you're a new person, you're elected in as a governor today, you take almost one year, one and a half years to really stabilize. And, and also know that some of the members of your team are not good. That's why most cases after one year, one year or months, the president or the governor dissolve cabinet and now sit down and get people. By the time you want to work for another one and a half years, it's another election. You forgot, you are all busy about winning the election. It's actually for everywhere that if we must develop, and that's why we want to change certain things, then we must plan our projects based on planning. If there's anyone that should share equal praise for her contribution to the success of President Jonathan at the last elections, it is the first lady who single-handedly galvanized the entire women population in the country to vote massively for her husband, an architect Namadi Sambo. They should date through campaigns to many states of the country, define harsh elements in many cases. In appreciation, the First Lady, Dame Patience Jonathan, supported by her twin sister and wife of the Vice President, Haja Namadi Sambo, rolled out the drums at a special presidential inauguration banquet for women from all over the country. In attendance were wives of past presidents, heads of state, vice presidents, from independence through the military and civilian era, 
as well as wives of present leaders in the various hierarchy of governance and the executive and legislative arms of government. There were performances by veteran artists like Bongo Zikwe and Onyeka Owenu, which elicited a lot of excitement on the dancing floor by all women, as if to say, after campaigning vigorously throughout the country, it was time to savor the aroma of victory by letting down our airs, and this the deed without any reservation at all. A toast to the continued success of the Jonathan administration was proposed by Mrs. Helen Mark, wife of the Senate President. In remarks at the event, Dame Patience Jonathan again thanked Nigerian women for their steadfast love and support, which enabled her husband to win an overwhelming mandate to remain in office for a four-year term. Dame Patience Jonathan again reiterated her promise to see that her husband, the president, fulfills his election promise of 35% ambassadorial and ministerial appointments for Nigerian women. At this Remember that leaders of women voted. I use this 
Shehu Musa Air Adwa Center in Abuja. The presidential inauguration exhibition organized by the Ministry of Culture and Tourism paraded the pictures and portraits of past leaders and other icons and monuments that are synonymous with Nigeria's history from independence to date. 